Hey everybody, we're going to be turning a popcorn ceiling into an acoustic masterpiece. I do this for a $2.50 square foot, so let's do this. First, measure out. Make sure you plan your space accordingly at a 180 square foot room. This is what I turn it into. Let's do it. So, always make sure you know how much wood you need. I had this delivered from Home Depot. As you can see, I <laughs> took me quite a while to bring it in. I got 47 one by six by 12 foot and I had to cut them all down to 11 foot. So then I just needed one across cause it's an 11 by 15 foot room. So I wanted to just do one board across really was going to give me the look I needed. And you're going to be seeing a lot of this. I'm doing a lot of stud finding in my ceiling. I always have that painter's tape available. So you can mark it, move on, mark it, move on. I did end up getting a lot of the ceiling dust coming down on me, on my face, and my mouth, and my eyeballs. It's going to be messy. It's not like scraping the ceiling, but you are going to get a lot of the residual coming down. What I found is in my basement, I had my joists running one way, and then halfway through the room, they started running the other way. It's not uncommon, it's not unheard of, but I don't know, for some reason my basement in that room, the joist would run one way and then another. Now I'm doing a poke test. I think I have the joist found, so I'm shoving a metal uh, skewer up there trying to find if it's really the joist. And then I start taking a drill and I just start punching a bunch of holes because, you know, you're not going to see this popcorn ceiling anyway. Here I'm showing you the joist run this way, and then they start running this way. So make sure to find your joists because I'm going to be putting in furring strips and you want those furring strips put in right where the joists are. Furring strips are basically thin pieces of wood that are made to space out your material away from your uh, ceiling and it'll make sure that you have an even ceiling at the end. So you want to snap some chalk lines. So that really gives you a better reference when you're putting up your furring strips that uh, you're in the right spot. Prying off the uh, frame for my projector screen. Again, just taking a drill, punching a bunch of holes, making sure I actually have the joist. I did this in a bunch of the drill spots for my furring strips. I didn't 100% trust my stud finder because I found when I tried to put up the furring strips in a few different spots, I was finding nothing but sheetrock. But the the um, stud finder was saying there was a stud there, but there wasn't. So again, it's a material you're never going to see my ceiling again after I do this. So I don't care if I punched a bunch of holes in it. So put these furring strips in, make sure it's very secure right into the joists. I'm going to be putting fabric on first to cover my whole ceiling. I went on Amazon and I just found some uh, photo frame or uh, photo backdrop fabric. It was like a 12 by 10. So I bought three of those. And I think they were about, for all three, is probably $45, I want to say. So my wood... 47 pieces of wood, the furring strips, and that fabric was probably around 425 450 bucks. The stain I already had, I used a Verathane uh, Espresso. So look for Verathane Espresso. That's just the color I used, but use whatever color you want to use. Um, here, I have to cut up my furring strips to go around my vent. I did take that vent cover off. And I sprayed it black. You can't find a black vent cover that's under like $30. It's ridiculous. So anyway, <laughs> I ended up just spray, spraying my old one black. My light fixture, I take out so I can get the fabric underneath it. I can cut it around the hole. I can plan for that. I end up getting a new night light fixture. Um, I get a flush mount LED one. And it that's works with the dimmer switch. So it worked out really nice. 
it cleans up my ceiling quite a bit. So here I'm putting up my fabric. I'm, uh, I don't have nails in my gun here. I have staples, so it actually hold it up better to my furring strips. And I'm just pulling it up, and then I'm just doing the edges. I'm not doing the middle because I want to pull that tight as I'm putting my wood strips across the top over this fabric. So fabric, it's going to help densen the sound going from my theater room upstairs. It's going to be better than painting the ceiling, I think. It's going to be a lot cleaner and quicker just to cover it with this fabric. Um, I just uh, watched a few videos myself of people not even doing similar stuff to this, but I got a few ideas by people doing some things in their rooms, but this is kind of over the top from what I've seen. So hopefully it gives you a good idea what you want to do. I really like how this turned out. I'm recording this video talking right now in the room if you can tell there's not a lot of echo it's not a lot of bounce around i've been really pleased with the audio i've gotten in in uh, terms of you know before and after so once i put up this fabric i noticed it didn't stretch all the way out to the edges of the room it wasn't as wide as they advertised so that's when i end up buying a third sheet cut it into strips and had to do the outside of the room the light I put back in and use for the rest of the fabric, but then I do end up switching out the uh, the unit. And again, I'm just doing the edges of the fabric. You don't want to tighten it up in the middles, I found. And I leave a big seam there in the middle because that's where my first board is going to go. So that just worked out for me and the way I knew I wanted to do this. I was just going to start right there with the board. I wanted to do the shittiest part first. And by that, I mean cutting out for going around that light fixture. So we're planning out the wood. I know I have to cut them all to 136 inches. So here we go. I'm kind of putting gaps in them. I'm trying to figure out, do I want to go three quarter inch, one inch? So then I can cut some little pieces to use as spacers. So I had to cut 47 boards down to 136 inches that's all my cutoffs I have my furring strips there and my boards now it's time to take this out i'm going to plan my cut these you just kind of wiggle and you pull these are kind of what all the connectors are going to now and i have to take out the old box electrical box there's it's nailed into a joist so you got to kind of knock it out. You'll see me take a uh, crowbar and smash it up, get the nail loose. Because when I rewire this, the new light comes with the box, but it's an enclosed box that you can just set up in there. It's an LED light, so it's a different wiring system for it. So this I'm just going to press it up, get it up out of the way. And lo and behold, there's an HVAC duct right there right above my hole. I'll be showing it to you in a little bit. Always plan on these projects going sideways, at least for a few things. And I'm getting this popcorn ceiling dust everywhere on these brand new sheets. I did not plan on this. The LED light I bought was a eight inch circle instead of the, you know, six inch that was there or even a three maybe, so I had to punch out a bigger hole. But it's nice because this light I bought, you can just fit up in there. Yep, there's that HVAC, <laughs> that duct. Oh, son of a gun. But I was able to get this up in there. It has uh, little feet springs on the outside. There we go, powered on. So now back to the wood in the garage. I had to sand this top and two sides with 80 grit and then 320 47 boards I had to do two different grits it took i started at 10 p.m one night and i think i got done at 2 a.m and i i just wanted to get it done so i did all the boards in one night it was grueling and some of my boards you see how it sticks up like that i got them there's some a little warped a little to the left a little to the right but I could use all but two, and I think I needed all but three. 
but I didn't have to return any. I just figured, you know, five or ten percent of what you get is going to be junk. So you can always at least pick your good side. That's the yellowish stuff I didn't sand yet, and then the cleaner stuff. This is a panoramic here of the room so far with the new. I got new sheets for the outside. So this is from a second, uh, well, it's a third sheet I had to buy. And here's my espresso varathane. Again, I do this all in one shot. So I bought this microfiber sponge from Home Depot. A guy kind of pointed it out to me. It was so slick. Guys, it holds a lot of stain, and that's what it's made for. And it made this job probably twice as fast is what it could have been. So I'm just pulling it on, pulling it on. I started doing four boards at a time, top and sides. And then I go back with the microfiber towel and I would dry off the excess, pull it off. So it ended up being a lot quicker than sanding them, but I had to do, yeah, 47 of these boards. But when you see the end product, you get out of it what you put into it I mean and nothing's more true than what you see with this project I was really happy I didn't take shortcuts I'm the kind of DIY guy that wants to take a lot of shortcuts you'll see that in some of my other videos I get close to the finish line and I run and I trip <laughs> here's the wood most of it and I have some to go I'm putting in my first piece again I want to cover that seam let's do the hard one first let's cover that seam Let's get that notch, that hole cut out. So once I put all this up, then I can see if my new LED light fits in there. Now I switched over to nails. And remember, I'm going right into the joists. That's or my furring strips now. I'm nailing right into my furring strips using a vacuum to clean up all that mess of the popcorn ceiling. So you do use that spacer, which ended up being a three-quarter inch. And I make sure I use that spacer along the whole line of the uh, board going up. Because these boards are bowed out some. And what I've been using too is a clamp. So if it's tight on one end, not on another, I can actually get a clamp up there and pull the boards together and nail them to the furring strips. And it worked out really well. So measuring my circle... Um, I was able to plan out my boards. And then this last board has the last bit of the circle in there. Here we go. And once I got this done, it was really off to the races. That's why I suggest doing the hardest part first. <laughs> get it behind you. Then you have all the confidence in the world. I have to get this light in. If it fits in there, man, I'm golden. And this light, this LED light, it's brighter than heck. I mean, holy cats. Sorry about the light, but I needed it. So it just so happened I could lean this up there before I put it into place. And once I got the first four or five boards up here, I was really, really happy with how this is looking. And you can already tell how it's going to turn out. If you have a smallish room, I'd say go for this project. If you have a whole living room, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it would, took me a long time to do this. Um, I mean, to stain your own wood, I do end up cutting my own quarter rounds, and I show that too, to put around the outside. Uh, it's, it's a, it took a long time, a week and a half, nights and weekends. So not a long, long time, but for this size of the room, I couldn't imagine doing a whole, you know, mid or upper floor of my house with this stuff, which also have popcorn ceiling. If you want to see me cover more popcorn ceiling, Check out my other videos because I did the whole basement in my house. I covered it with uh, wainscoting panels. So here we go. I'm just off to the races. I'm spacing. I'm getting a system down. Um, putting up the last board on the projector screen end of the room here. And then I start at the light and start going towards the other side of the room. And that had its own difficult times, too, because I had to go around my vent. Well, there's no furring strips on the other side of the vent, so I had to put a piece of wood in there to hold it far enough away. 
and the ceiling to have it match. So I was kind of punching through two pieces of wood there. But I ended up cutting all these pieces of wood just right. So when I put my vent up, it covered all the outsides. I mean, measure twice, cut once has never been more true. So here's me using the clamp to pull those boards in together to get the gap that I need. Because it's real important when you have this much wood running above you, you can really tell which spaces are bigger or smaller than others. So here's my last board going in. I am so excited. I got it up there. No wall is ever square in your house. I don't know if you have the special house. I sure don't because I had to go cut this board I think three times because it fit on one end, not on the other. And I made sure my spaces were even the whole way. So here we go. It's all installed. I am super, super, super happy with how it turned out. If you guys end up doing this or doing anything like it, make sure to comment. Send me a link. Really like to know what you guys end up doing too. Here I'm covering the vent up. I just have some regular black paint. <clears throat> and I decided I was going to make my own quarter round. I already had some leftover wood. So I take a router, take a router bit, and just run along the whole edge. End up cutting it to three quarter inches. So I do well, each of these board on both sides. And then so I can cut three quarter inch. Look at that line. Real good. So I stain this also. I clean up the edges of sandpaper. And then I stain it with the same espresso stain. So I didn't even have to buy quarter round. Probably saved myself another 60, 70 bucks to go around uh, 11 and 11 and 15. So here I'm cutting it to length. And then this one, this is a good way to use your warped boards. Because after you cut them into thin strips like this, it doesn't matter if they're warped. Because you're going to be pressing them up around the edges of your room anyway. But at the end of the day, even though it was a long project and took about almost every tool that I have and a lot of patience, <laughs> I was really happy with it. I would do it again maybe next year <laughs> in a different room. But I'm going to need a break after this. I'm having to uh, make a... Um, what was I making? For my brother's meat market, my next project is going to be making a uh, a stand holder for some product. So here's my last bit of quarter round going in. Hit it with the nail gun. Boop, boop. And that you can press up and kind of fill up all those gaps on the outside. So I'm going to be done talking here soon. I'm going to do a whole walkthrough. Really appreciate you guys hanging in there, watching through this whole thing. I had so much fun doing this project. I didn't want to do it the disservice of doing a quick two-minute video. I really wanted to show you what I did so you can really know what's all involved in this. I don't like seeing those quick TikTok videos, but here I'm going to shut up, and here's the walkthrough. Enjoy.
but now there are so many flowers to visit. The pollination patrol needs a night shift.